In this question, we have a sample of gas in a four litre container, and it's used to get the pressure temperature graph shown in blue. So here we can see we've got pressure on our y-axis, temperature on our x-axis, and this here in blue, that's our original pressure temperature graph at a volume of four liters. Let's label that on. This is at a volume of four liters. The sample of gas is then moved to a 12 litre container. Okay, so in this question, we've got volume starting at four and ending at 12 litres. So that's going to be V1, our initial volume, and V2, our final volume. At V1, at four litres, they've gotten a pressure temperature graph. So what that means is they've gotten their gas at a volume of four litres, kept it at that same volume, and changed the temperature from very low to very high. And as they do that, they're measuring the pressure constantly and plotting a graph to see how the relationship between pressure and temperature is at a volume of four litres. Then they've moved the gas to a 12 litre container and our job is to figure out what will the new graph of pressure and temperature look like at a 12 litre volume. So first let's think, how did the volume change? So our V1 is four litres. Our V2 is 12 litres. To get from four to 12, we have to multiply by three. So our question of how did the volume change? Our volume multiplied by three. Okay, next we're trying to figure out how will that affect the pressure and temperature. So let's go to our equation sheet and look for an equation with volume, temperature and pressure in it. So down here we have the combined gas law. That's got pressure, volume, and temperature at the beginning with a number one and at the end with a number two. So let's write down that equation. We've got pressure at the beginning times volume at the beginning divided by temperature at the beginning is equal to pressure at the end times volume at the end divided by temperature at the end. Okay, so there's our equation. So first let's answer, how will this affect the pressure at a given temperature? So I'm gonna write out my equation again here. And it says at a given temperature, that means my temperature is remaining constant. So I can cancel out T1 and T2 from the equation because they're gonna be the same. We just wanna see how will changing the volume affect the pressure? So let's put in our values for the volume. So we have pressure one multiplied by volume one, which was four liters, is equal to pressure two multiplied by volume two, which was 12 liters. Okay, I wanna rearrange this to get P2 to find out what my final pressure will be. So I'm gonna divide by 12 on both sides. That's gonna cancel out on the right to give P2 on its own. P2 is gonna be equal to equal to four twelfths of P1. Well, four divided by 12 is the same as one divided by three. So we've got a third of P1. Okay, so we found that the final pressure should be a third of the original pressure if our temperature is constant and our volume changes from four liters to 12 liters. So that's answered our first question. How will this affect the pressure at a given temperature? Pressure will divide by three. Another way to think of that is just to know that at a constant temperature, pressure and volume are inversely proportional. That means if my volume decreases, my pressure increases and vice versa. And this makes sense logically because if we have a bigger container, then our particles are gonna be more spread out, so the pressure is gonna be less. So multiplying the volume of our container by three is gonna divide the pressure by three at a given temperature, because those particles will be three times more spread out. Okay, next look at how this will affect the temperature at a given pressure. So again, I'm gonna write out my equation again. Okay. 
and it says at a given pressure this time. So that means my pressure is going to remain constant. My P1 and P2 are going to be the same, so I can cancel them out from our equation. We're left with V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So again, let's put in our volume values. At the beginning, we had a volume of 4. And at the end, we had a volume of 12. And let's rearrange this to find T2. Right now, I have T1 and T2 on the bottom of the equation. So I'm just going to multiply by both T1 and T2 to kind of flip this equation around. So I'm going to multiply by T1 on both sides. And those will cancel there. And I'm going to multiply by T2 on both sides. And those will cancel there. That leaves me with, I'm going to write this out to make it clearer, T2 times 4 is equal to 12 times T1. Finally, I want to rearrange to get T2 on its own, so I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides to get rid of that 4 on the left. That's going to leave me with T2 is equal to 12 fourths of T1. Well, 12 divided by 4 is 3, so that gets 3 times T1. So T2 is 3 times T1. So that's telling us our temperature will multiply by 3. So let's fill that in here. Temperature will multiply by 3. So again, we can either use the equation as I've shown here, or we can just think about knowing if we have a volume and a temperature with a constant pressure, then the volume and the temperature are going to be proportional to each other. So if my volume increases, my temperature is going to increase. If my volume decreases, my temperature is going to decrease. Okay, so we figured out what's going to happen to my pressure and temperature. Now we have to figure out which of these graphs is going to be the correct answer at 12 liters. So let's think about what we found. We found that at a given temperature, pressure will divide by three. Okay, so I'm going to pick a point here. And let's say at a given temperature, so this would be my given temperature here. At that temperature, pressure should divide by three. So if we're looking on our y-axis at the pressure, that's going to be going down. So this, that would be our pressure dividing by 3. So this point is going to be the correct point showing how my pressure will be different at a given temperature. What about at a given pressure? So let's just pick a point again here. So this is currently my temperature at that pressure at 4 litres. Now we know that at 12 litres, temperature will multiply by 3 at a given pressure. So my temperature should be getting bigger. So this is going to show my temperature multiplying by 3. So that's going to be the correct point showing my new temperature. So we can see both of our correct points that we found are on this green line here. So this green line is representing what the graph would look like at 12 litres. So we can choose here, green would be what our graph would look like at 12 litres. So this question is using what we've learned about gas laws so far, but putting it in this format of the graph, and you're kind of thinking about it in ratios to see if something multiplies or divides by a certain number, how does this affect the other variables, and how will that affect how our graph looks?